It's graduation time again, and you can be sure that there will be many speeches urging young people to go out there and change the world. And those same young people will be wondering how. Well, tonight we have the story of one man who set about changing the world by first changing himself. Our story begins on a misty night in 1971 when two oil tankers collide beneath the Golden Gate Bridge, spilling more than a half million gallons of crude into the bay. At that time, John Francis was just another hippie living in West Marin County. But when he saw the oozing sludge and dying birds, he wanted to protest in a way that others thought was crazy. Francis wanted to stop riding in cars. And I found myself on the road walking and I said, well, I'm already walking here. Uh, I'm just gonna keep walking. With his banjo as his companion, John Francis challenged anyone who would listen to believe in his mission. I found myself arguing with, with my friends if one person could make a difference by not riding in an automobile. So he had another idea. To stop the arguments, he would simply stop talking. I decided that I would stop speaking just for one day to give my community a gift of my silence because John was a big <laughs> talker. <laughs> this is Francis back then. He was 27 years old on the day he stopped talking in order to truly listen. That day's silence lasted 17 years. When I first stopped speaking, I could hear all the conversations pretty much that I ever had. <laughs> After about a month of not speaking, they soon went away. Without the conversations, John had only to listen to himself, and what he heard disturbed him. He realized that he had been living a lie about who he was as a black man in a white world. What I saw in the media was that I could be a buffoon or um, I could be a criminal, but could I be the person I am right now? And I didn't see that person. It took me to just stop talking until I said, oh my God, there you are. <laughs> and, and then I just rediscovered who, who I was and I didn't need to lie anymore. Well. I couldn't lie <laughs> because I didn't talk. I mean, I just couldn't do it. Francis went from being this know-it-all to someone who wanted to know more. So he began a pilgrimage that left his footprints across the country. John Francis. Linda Lindell. You haven't taken a ride and you walked all the way, huh? I saw America. I heard America speak to me. And I was very taken by what my experience was. What Francis didn't know at that time was that he was ahead of his time, on the forefront of what would become a movement, environmentalism. When he found that Southern Oregon University offered a new course in environmental studies, he walked to Ashland and enrolled. He then walked to Missoula, Montana to get a master's degree, eventually ending up at the University of Wisconsin to get his PhD. Along the way, he also taught a discussion class. Remember, all without speaking. Sometimes I would make these signs like so. And my class would sit around, they go, what's he saying, what's he saying? No, I think he's talking about clear cutting. No, 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 that's not clear cutting. He was using a handsaw, and he wouldn't clear cut with a You can clear cut with a handsaw. I think he's talking about selective forestry. And I would just kind of back out, because this is a discussion class, and, and let the discussion go on. And Francis's education was evolving as well. I thought environment was about uh, human-made ugliness and pollution and endangered species. I started to realize that environment was really much more than that, that it involved, you know, human rights and civil rights and, and economic equity and, and how we treat each other when we meet each other. 
All along his journey from west coast to east, the man who walked and didn't talk was being heard. In the 22 years he spent trekking across America, the once counterculture concept of environmentalism had become mainstream. By the time he arrived in Washington, D.C., the U.S. Coast Guard invited him to write pollution regulations for the nation's waterways, and the United Nations appointed him environmental ambassador. I couldn't have dreamed that up. <laughs> I couldn't have seen it. When people said, you know, one person can't make a difference, I have to say there were doubts sometimes, you know, as I'm walking and, and I am alone and I am just a black man with a banjo <laughs> walking across America. I think we just make that commitment to make the journey. And once we commit ourselves to doing it, um, we change. We change ourselves from just sitting on the fence thinking about it to actually jumping in the field and making a mad dash <laughs> or a slow walk. And I think that's our journey. That's all of our journeys. I think each one of us has that journey, that potential in, in, in ourselves to do that. John Francis just published a book called Planet Walker and is getting ready for another walk across the United States.